Hello my little butterflies and this video is going to be the Goosebumps tag. So yeah, this tag was created by Shell at Fixie Dust and I found her tag through the group booktubers from around the world I think it was in. Yeah, and this is an original tag made by her and I'm going, it's a recent tag so it's not something like from years ago, it's something that's this year. Um, from this month that she created so I'm going to be doing that it's 11 questions and it's kind of movie and book related so the first prompt is welcome to dead house tell us your favorite and least favorite horror tropes so my favorite thing recently that I've loved that they have been doing and it's not like everybody does it good but it's just that when you're turning like childhood games into horror movies like they have Truth or Dare that they turn into a horror movie. I haven't had the chance to watch the movie yet, but the trailer looks disgusting. Haven't watched the movie yet, but you know, just turning a childhood game, something so innocent, into something so evil and gross. I'm, I'm loving that in movies so far. But I have a couple least favorites that's been going on for years. Like one of them is the when they hear the noise and they go right to the noise they go looking for the noise knowing something is wrong they know it's not a normal day shit's already happening and they go towards the noise the noise instead of away from it like common sense or you you they hear the noise and then hello hello is anyone there and i'm like that's just i'm just oh i hate that and another thing is that a trope that i'm really hating is in almost every horror movie there's always if not if it's not a black person that's the first to die, which is also a trope that I hate, it's always the couple that's having sex that dies first. If y'all haven't noticed that in horror movies. Some, right when everything pops off, there's usually like a couple that snuck away from the rest of the group and they like having sex and then they either die first or it's like a black person that dies first. And yeah, I just, I, I hate those. Number two is stay out of the basement. Is there a place or area that you find creepy to be in? And for me, that would be extra long hallways. Like, you know, um, our first apartment before in this one, our first apartment complex, it was like a indoor kind of thing. Like everybody's apartment was inside and it's like, it's all down the hallway. And so at night it would be really creepy because it's really quiet. And so when you walk in, it's like this long hallway and it's really quiet. And sometimes at the end of the hallway, it's like it's a little darker. So that was, I, that's probably like the creepiest place for me in general. It's just places that have these like extra long hallways. It's just, you, you feel like something's going to come running down the hall at you or something. Number three, say cheese and die. Show us your favorite horror theme cover, books or movies. And I have one for each one. Okay, so my one for the books is What Lies Beneath by our very own Richard Denny and I just think that's like the creepiest fucking like horror cover and that's middle grade and it's so creepy so um, I don't have a physical copy of it I have a, a Kindle edition and it's just really freaking creepy for a middle grade novel then the thing I have for a movie is, and I have the movie, but it doesn't have the cover on it because it's old. And that's the movie Decoys, which I borrowed from my mom, which I still haven't given it back, and I've watched it, and I just, I keep forgetting to send it back. But the cover, it looks like it doesn't have a cover on it anymore. It's an old movie, but it looks like this, okay? And I just think that's creepy by itself. And the movie, and I don't know if any of y'all have seen it, if y'all haven't seen it, Decoys is basically about this like alien race of females that come to Earth because on their planet all the men have died out so they come to Earth to kind of, they travel from planet to planet to try to um, reproduce but how they reproduce it it they can't successfully reproduce because it always kills the men before they can actually do it and it's like when they have sex with the men it's like their tentacles like come out and it goes down their throat and it pretty much frees them to death inside out like it's it's fucking amazing it's a good movie i love this movie like to this day i love this movie number four nine of the living dummy if you could bring to life any fictional character who would it be this is easy for me i would bring man to life for red queen i love red queen now i'm not saying the whole series is a five stars, which I haven't read War Storm yet. But I'm not saying every book was a five star read. But for the most part, I know I gave Red Queen five stars. I think I gave Glass Sword four stars. I gave the novella that came out, uh, what is it, Cruel Crown. 
or something like that. I gave that, I think I gave that a, a three or a two and a half, something like that. But because it was like a, a two novellas into one, one was supposed to be following Queen Corian, which is uh, Cal's mother, and then the other one is supposed to be following Farley growing up before she, you know, before everything went down. And I didn't really care for Father's story, that's why I gave it such a little rating. But, um, that was, it's not like the whole series was a five-star read. But I love the series as a whole so far. Even though know, I haven't built up the courage to read, to read um, Warstorm yet. So, and I love Mary. She has her flaws, but I feel like we vibe. And even though she has her flaws, she's like a normal person. She isn't like Superwoman. You know, it's not like she doesn't have her chips and cracks. She, just like a normal person so I would love to bring Mary to life. Number five, The Girl Who Cried Monster. What is an urban legend that you secretly believe is true? And for this I guess hunted dolls or objects in general hunted objects. I think that's a real thing. Uh, I think paranormal stuff is real. Like I believe in ghosts. I don't think, I know a lot of people don't believe in ghosts but I believe in ghosts and spirits to a certain extent. Now don't get me wrong movies you know kind of amp it up a little bit. But I believe it. I believe in it to a certain extent, and I definitely believe like hunting, hunting objects. Period. Not just dolls, but hunting objects. Period. I believe in. I think that's just. I just think that's a given. I just think that that's automatically true, and I feel like you shouldn't. Have, you shouldn't be able to argue whether an object can be hunted or not. It doesn't have to move, but just the fact that it can draw whatever spirit was close to it when they was and you know still living, it can do that. So hunted objects. Number six, the hunted mask, favorite supernatural creature, book or movie. And for this, I was trying not to be like just so cliche, but vampires was the first thing that came to my mind because I love vampires. I, I don't know, but that's the first thing that came to my mind. And I was trying to like think of something else so it wasn't like just a uh, obvious answer. But it's either vampires or shapeshifters. To be honest, like, and I don't mean just shapeshifters like werewolves. I mean like the like mystique kind of shapeshifters, like you can shapeshift into someone else, you know, like into a person or anything, like just a shapeshifter in general that can shapeshift into anything, not just an animal. Number seven is the Werewolf of Fever Swamp, favorite werewolf book or movie. And for this, I had two of them. And for a book, I just I couldn't. I know what book it is, but I can't think of the name of it because a long time I read it. It's a it was a Wattpad book. Is that how you say it? Wattpad? But it was a, a long time ago I read this. And I can't remember the name of it, but it was like about... These werewolves that, uh, they were trying to find their mate and protect their pet. But you know, werewolves are like, uh, like life partners. Like, it's not like, oh, we just have sex to make it. They are life partners. So, wolves in general are like that. So, werewolves are like that. So, once they, like, find a mate, it's like, we together for life. It's like this connection, this bond that they have. And so, it's about, it was about this main character finding that bond with another werewolf. But I think she was like a newly, or she was like rare because she was a female shifter. And I don't think... That they had too many female shifters, so it was rare for her to be a shifter, and she found her mate, and just like a whole bunch of shit was going on within the clan, within the pack, so they're trying to protect their pack and all this kind of stuff. I, just, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a really good book. But for a movie wise, I said The Underworld. I love The Underworld movies. I just wish they had another one because I don't like how the last one ended. It left it on, it ended on such a cliffhanger where it was like, well, motherfucker, y'all just got back together and now y'all done separated again. What is going on? So. I want another Underworld movie to wrap the whole thing up because I want to see them in together as a family. Like, I love the Underworld movie. Number eight is One Day at Horrorland. Tell us about a spooky pastime. For this, I automatically knew what I wanted to pick. It wasn't something I had to think about because I just started thinking about the crazy stuff we used to do in school. And I just started thinking about Bloody Mary and Candyman. Like, you know, you're supposed to, like, go in the bathroom in the mirror, turn the lights off, and you're supposed to, I think you're supposed to flush the toilet. Uh, that might not have been true. But you're supposed to stand in the mirror and say Bloody Mary, I think, three times. Yeah, and if a candy man, I think he had to say his name five times. And he's supposed to come and he's supposed to be in the dark bathroom. So I know we used to do that all the time in school. And it wasn't necessarily scary, but it was fun. Because it was like nothing ever happened. But being that young when we was doing it, it was like it was a possibility that it could happen. So it was just fun to do it and think that it could happen. And then laugh it off when it didn't really happen. Number nine, The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight. Your favorite book or movie involving witchcraft. And this is also another one I didn't have to think much about. And that's The Craft. I love The Craft. That's the movie. I love The Craft movie. Oh, I love it so fucking much. It's just so much action. It's just like my favorite witch movie that I've ever watched. I don't think I have another favorite witch movie. 
I think that is my favorite. Like, I just, I love everything about it. Like, it was just perfect. Like, oh my God, like, the, the craft is just, like, it's a classic. I, I love the craft. Like, I need to do them as a Halloween costume one year. I need to pick a character and just be, uh, and get my friends to dress up with me or something. Get some of my girlfriends to dress up with me and we could dress up like the craft. Like, that would be so freaking fun. Like, yeah, because that's like DIY costumes too cause they, but it's easy to put together if you see like what they wear it's very easy to put that costume together and then it's something that you could probably wear after Halloween probably not all together but you can still wear those items after Halloween too so it's not like you just spend money on this Halloween costume that you only gonna wear once then number 10 is A Night in Terror Town if you were to put if you were to be put into a horror movie which would it be now for this, uh, I have two because I'm not sure if my first one is considered a horror movie. And that's Blade. I don't know if the Blade movies count as a horror movie, but if it does, I would love to be put in the Blade movie because Wesley is just way too much. I love the chocolate. Oh. Okay, Wesley? Like, whew, Jesus. Like, when I tell you, I used to have this man pictures on my binders at school. I used to take his pictures and have like a whole collage of just Wesley pictures all on my binders at school because I was in love with him. I mean, I'm still in love with him, but I was in love with him. So if that can be real, if that if that's like considered a horror movie, then I'm down for that. But if that's not considered a horror movie, call me crazy, but I would not mind being put into the Halloween movies, okay? Because on Halloween 4 or f Halloween 4, when uh, Michael was trying to kill his niece Jamie and she got him to take his mask off, Michael was looking kind of fine, okay? Michael wasn't looking like, you know, like Jason, uh, you know, Michael was looking pretty fucking fine, like, you know? So, I mean, I feel like if I could be put into that movie, I might be able to help him, you know, get over his, you know, issues that he's that he has with wanting to kill everybody. He just needs some anger release. He just needs somebody to talk to him, you know? So, if that works, then I wouldn't mind being put in it if that means that I will not die. I would gladly take that movie. Call me crazy, but I'm about it. Number 11, bonus question. Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Tell us a spooky campfire story. Okay, so, a bear and a rabbit were taking a shit in the forest. Okay, now to tag people. It's been a while since I tagged people in a video. But I really have two people that I want to tag. Yeah, two people that I want to tag. The first person is Richard from Bookisly Richie. If he decides to do it, I just thought it was funny because it's like a goosebump tag. And he likes horror themed stuff, horror movies, horror books. So I just figured this would be good to get into his head and see, you know, what his favorite horror themes are in the movie, what he likes, what he doesn't like, you know, stuff like that. And then I will also like to tag Brandy Shanae from Books with Brandy Shanae. Because she just tagged me in the Hocus Pocus tag, which I'm going to do next. So I wanted to tag her in this one. And I like this one. I thought this one was fun. And y'all know, like, around Halloween time, I like to do, like, tags theme to the season. So I just wanted to tag her. Well, I guess I tag anyone else that likes to do tags often because I know a couple of y'all do. Oh, you know what? I have one more person I want to tag because she does tags a lot. That's uh, Mayana from Mayana Reads. I think it's the name of her channel. Pretty sure that's what it is. But she does tags pretty often and I haven't seen her do this tag. So I just figured I'll tag you in this tag too. If you don't mind. If not, if you don't want to, that's cool too. So thank you guys for watching. That is all I have. Anybody else is welcome to do this tag. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.